Good morning, folks. We've got activity on the sun, weather to report and forecast, and one of the oddest twists in the climate realm I could have imagined. Plasma filaments dancing around the limb here in 304 angstroms as we come to spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star, small pops and surges here and there, no big flashes, no solar flares, and no filament eruptions. Bright sunspots and dark coronal holes turning through. The solar wind here at Earth is fluctuating between calm and slightly above calm conditions. You could bounce around in that range all day and you won't budge the geomagnetic indices. But thus far we've belied the reason to have eyes open, and it comes from the incoming northern active region, where indeed we've not yet seen any significant space weather. But the grouping appeared as having no strong lead, then decay took over all but the trailing spot, which has now blossomed into a sunspot group of its own. Eyes on it today for development, since even with a flurry of new friends, they don't have their magnetic act together just yet. No close proximity delta-class spots. Coming to look at the southern coronal hole, we are awaiting any impact from the departed north so it either missed or is yet another weak, slower stream taking its time to get here. But as Earth connects to this southern opening magnetically this morning, earthquake watch is elevated to start the week. Let's go to weather where an unprecedented hailstorm took out large agricultural areas in France, damaged vehicles, and even killed one person. Hail the size of pigeon eggs is indeed unprecedented there or the French wouldn't be there in the first place. Up next, Alberta is still offshore as of 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, but the wind and rain are already making themselves right at home at the coastline and inland respectively. The system will not stall out, but will drop flash flood potential rains across at least seven states. Low-lying areas are at particular hazard risk today and tomorrow. Looking ahead, we'll also be watching for development in the North Indian Ocean, especially that one that's going to track towards Burma. Interesting piece hit Cornell's preprint archive last night detailing a peculiar discrepancy in the reporting of solar flares. It would appear that in April or May 1997, they changed how they defined the start and end times of a flare, and never went back to correct the pre-1997 figures. They exist incorrectly in the official database today. Our top story comes out of the University of Arizona. Milankovitch cycles are confirmed to dominate the glacial ice age periods on the planet, but they are unlikely to be doing so for the reasons commonly accepted. They found record of the 100,000 year ice age cycle in the dusty rainfall records of the Asian monsoon, but in a way that cannot be due to forcing from polar insulation changes of solar energy as is widely believed by mainstream climate scientists to be the thing that throws us into ice. Instead, it must be a tropical driver of the change, and it indicates that the throwing of Earth into those glacial periods occurs due to the tropical change in solar energy, not what is happening at the poles. This also puts volcanoes back into stark perspective as the tropical stratospheric injection of particles means much, much more to the Earth than in 100% of climate models in the history of science. Website members, you definitely need to check out Deeper Look 49 on the year, How Close We Came to a Major Disaster Caused by a Solar Storm, version 2.0. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.